Ariel Hawani in New York City alongside the UFC women's bantamweight champion Rowdy Ronda Rousey, who of course faces Misha Tate on December 28th in Las Vegas. And of course, Fox Sports 1, The Ultimate Fighter, September 4th. That launches first. Now, Ronda, we're on this uh, press tour here, world tour event, and there are four fights being featured. Your fight is stealing all the headlines. You have the most heat, the most trash talk, the most everything. Is this a conscious effort on your part? Are you trying to outshine the guys? Um, it's not like I'm purposely plotting all this out, but I think that um, if an opportunity is there, I'm going to try and play it up. And, yeah, the girls have to fight for attention a little bit. And, I mean, I can't really say it's a bad thing that all everyone's talking about after the last press conference is the chicks. I mean, um, I didn't get here by being dumb. <laughs> You said uh, on Instagram, I believe, hate me, love me, just debate me. I think it was like, uh, go ahead and love or hate me, just please debate me. What do you mean by that? Um, I just, I think that it, it's good for people to disagree about you. And if, um, like, did you talk about yogurt parfaits today? Not yogurt parfaits. I, I spoke of uh, Greek yogurt. I'm kidding. The point is, <laughs> point is, there's nothing to talk about because everyone loves yogurt parfaits. You're never going to talk about it. Why? Why would you? You know, you bring it up. Yeah, of course they're delicious. Stupid. Why? Like, talk. let's go back to the Ronda and Misha discussion right. because it's, it's something people disagree upon and it really generates a lot of discussion. And I think that's one of the important, most important things about a building up a fight is the word of mouth. There was a moment yesterday very reminiscent of Nick Diaz versus Frank Shamrock. <laughs> Square off and you flip her the bird. And I believe there were a couple other birds being flipped prior to that. Why did you feel the need to do that? Um, well, you have to realize that me and Misha already finished filming Tough, so uh, no one really knows where we left off, but we do. And um, I can't really say that much, but it, I think that um, things definitely got worse between me and her, and um, I can't really allude to why um, so much as she's never going to have an Armenian fan again. And uh, that's kind of why I like her less, and it's very noticeable. That's, that's a very intense statement. That, that, that you're saying that this kind of crossed the line, because you, you are surrounded by Armenians. You're trained, you're good friends with many. Do you feel like she crossed the line? Definitely, definitely. So that's where that came from. It didn't just come out of nowhere, the, the flipping of the bird. It definitely didn't come out of nowhere. You, ha you have to watch the show to really understand. And uh, even then, there was so much that went on there's, that there's no way that they could put it in that many episodes. So um, I, I've accepted the fact that no one's really going to understand um, why I'm thinking what I'm thinking, why I'm acting the way that I am. But um, I can't walk around just trying to act like how everyone expects me to. I can only act like, you know, in, uh, as a reaction to my environment. Is it possible that you actually hate each other more now than you did before after your first fight in March of a couple of years ago? I don't really use the term hate, but I have, um, I've learned more about her personality and uh, I haven't really seen anything I like. Perhaps a disdain? You can't stand being around her? I would uh, compare it to chewing tinfoil. <laughs> I've never done that, but I, I'd imagine it's not very pleasurable. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> no. now, last time I spoke to you was uh, on Saturday, and uh, that interview just aired last night on Fuel TV, and you, you told me about you were afraid you were going to get replaced, and now everyone's seen this interview when she came out. Can you explain now, or will this be answered on the show? Is that why you can't tell us why you thought? Because I still can't really understand why you thought you would be replaced. Uh, no, I don't think it's really ever going to get answered. So it doesn't even get addressed on the show? Not so much, no. It's a horrible tease. See, um, I told you, there's a lot of things that went on on the show. You're not going to understand why, because there's so many things going on that, you know, we, we didn't catch or you can't set, put out. And so it's just like, you know, I, worrying about how I'm perceived is just like, it's out of my control. Mm. So I'm not going to invest my happiness in something I can't control. I get the impression that you're almost not looking forward to this and you won't even watch it when it comes because you're afraid of the way you'll be perceived. Accurate? Um, I don't really want to watch it, no. Um, good thing I'm going to be in Bulgaria while it's airing. I might have to watch it in order to be able to like see how things came off in order to be able to respond to it. But um, no, I mean, the, the only thing I really cared about was just my athletes getting the best treatment that they needed. If you ask them, they'll, you know, they'll say that I was the best coach I possibly could have been, and that's all that I care about is how they performed and how they felt, how every, what everybody else thinks. It's not my problem. They were my responsibility, and that's all I cared about. When you started, you received some heat from some of the veterans in this sport. Now they've kind of come around and they respect you more. But, and I know you can't name names, but was there any instance where you now had to coach one of these people who was openly criticizing you and the roles were reversed a bit? Oh, like someone on my team yeah, used yeah. to. Uh, 
I, I had I had one person approach me and say like um, I don't I really can't I won't say who it is okay, or anything sure. but uh, he was saying that before when I was first coming up and all these articles like Rhonda said this and this and this like who the hell is this chick who does she think she is and um, when we were able to train together he was like wow, I understand so much more da 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 and um, it, it, it's 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 kind of funny the impressions that you get from afar um, and how it really compares to the really real reality of what's in front of you. Okay, two more things. You mentioned Bulgaria. I'm assuming that's where you'll be filming Expendables, right? Yes, sir. What's your role in that film? I don't know how much I'm really allowed to say, but I mean... Sylvester Stallone just kind of blurted expendables. it out. It's Expendables. You're Come one on. of like the crew? You're one of those guys? You're part of the, like, the main guys, or are you on the other scene, team or something like that? Like I, I'm just trying to get a sense of what kind of role Rondo will be playing, because usually females aren't involved in the cast. It's true. I guess I'll have to watch the movie wow. and find out. Another groundbreaking moment for you. Yeah. We keep the, we're keeping them rolling. Last one. You're originally the main event for UFC 168. You're bumped to co-main event. Does that bother you? No, I absolutely love it. I'm so stoked about it. And uh, I think it's going to be the biggest event ever. And it's an honor to be a part of it. And I'm just really glad that um, carrying the views of the biggest card of the year is not really going to be so much my responsibility. So I can focus more on the training camp itself and not so much about the event and how it does. Awesome. Thank you very much. Good luck on the show. Good luck in the fight. Thank you.